welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Show Mott, and I got some stuff to talk about, baby. But before we jump in, thank you for your support. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and hit that bell as we release new content. Please share it with your friends, and thank you for your continued support of our channel. Rob Parker from Fox. I love that guy. <laughs> I love that guy. I love that guy. I don't always agree with him, but I love that guy because he gives no Fs about it. I didn't curse early because YouTube couldn't demonetize the video with an F-bomb in the first 10 seconds. But he gives no Fs at all. He will say what he thinks, and I love that about him. He's an older guy. He's in. I think he's probably a little bit older than I am. I don't know exactly how old he is. Let me let me, let me take a look real quick. Rob Parker, age. Eh, he's, he's 14 years old. He's 60 years old. I'm 46. I appreciate his candor. I appreciate his honesty. I appreciate that he does not care whose feelings he may hurt when he speaks on truth in sports. There's too many worrying about feeling situations in sports today, and it's tired as hell listening to. And that's something that I love about Rob Parker. Rob Parker recently had a commentary on the New Deal involving the WNBA getting $200 million a year for the next 11 years for a $2.2 billion deal, <clears throat> television rights deal. The reality of that deal is that deal is not actually a deal that the WNBA got on its own from any television networks. It's a deal that the NBA got and the nba determines how much the wmba is worth and how much they should get in an allocation of that money adam silver i guess and i'm sure with conversation with the different owners of the nba franchises determined that the number was 2.2 billion on its face it is a 3 Hundred plus percent per year increase from the previous deal that the WNBA had of sixty million. But Cheryl Miller, who I think is great, but I think she's slightly delusional. She thinks a little bit differently about what she thinks. The. WNBA should have gotten in this deal. And Rob Parker responded. Take a listen for what Cheryl Miller said and Rob Parker's response. The WNBA Players Association president and now Cheryl Miller are unhappy about the massive raise. Take a listen. Reporting about a $2.2 billion media rights deal um, out there. There's rumor of it? R reporting about the next media That's, rights deal. Uh, then if you, I, I'm not great with numbers, low ball. What, why do you say that? That's a low ball. You're saying how much? $2.2 billion over 11 Not years. enough. Not even close. Now, I'm not trying to inflate it a whole lot, but a two's nice, and eight would be better. That before we jump into what Rob has to say, I have my own comments on this absolutely asinine comment by Cheryl Miller. She says, I don't know numbers really well. Clearly you don't. Clearly you don't understand the most basic business practices. You don't know numbers. You don't understand what they were getting before, how much this has been increased to. It's a 300 plus percent increase. If you walk into any job right now, if you have a job anywhere and you're making 20 bucks an hour, go ahead and ask your boss to get. $80 an hour, right? No, it's 20, 60, $60 an hour. Ask for 60 bucks an hour. See if they laugh you out of the room. <laughs> I don't know if my math turned bad. Um, yeah, it's 300. Yeah, so 300% 300 increase. Yeah, you make 20 bucks an hour. Go ask for 60 bucks an hour for a raise. See if they laugh you out of the room. That's math. What in the... In what world do you get a 300% increase in a raise? You don't. You don't. Like, get out of here. She doesn't know math? 
Yeah, she doesn't know business either, but I'm going to let her continue on her asinine commentary. Better. That's what I'm talking about, because they know. They know. And we certainly have come a long way. And I'm not about gouging, but it, it's a long time overdue, and we're going to continue to get better. She said an eight. I'm not about gouging, but she thinks they should get $800 million a year. What? What? I'm going to do the math at the top, off the top of my head. That's about a 1,200% increase from the $60 million they were getting. She wants $800 million a year. Over 11 years, that would be, what, $8.8 billion? <laughs> I mean, you can't make this up. And then she says, because they know. What do they know? They know that Caitlin Clark brings people. You're assuming these other people can bring people. I got news for you, Cheryl. No, they can't. They, re they really can't. But I'll let you continue to talk. Better and better. All you have to do is look at, you know, college basketball and what's coming next. The next wave. The next wave of excitement. And you have this now. And pretty soon we're going to add another gold medal. So women's basketball is in a great place right now cheryl miller is this on stop it cheryl miller I, I get it you know you had the microphone somebody asked you a question so you decided but what cheryl miller doesn't understand that before this year and caitlin clark the w and WNBA st stood for welfare okay that's what it stood for ephraim and for years for Yes, that's exactly what it stood for, welfare. I love his I love his honesty, his brutal honesty. It's refreshing because we want to keep, stay in this world of wokeness and sensitivity training for people's feelings. Man, fuck that. Fuck that. This is business 101. There's no sensitivity or uh, or sympathy or feelings when it comes to business deals. Either they're good business deals or they're not good business deals. And there's nothing on earth that would sit here based on one year of, of change because of one player that, that's going to continue to progress and grow this grow and as if this is going to continue to grow. Newsflash, the number one pick in next year's draft is going to be Paige Bukers. Paige Bukers isn't going into her fifth year of college basketball. UConn draws. UConn doesn't draw attendance because of Paige Bukers as good as she is. UConn draws because UConn's been winning for 25 years. And there's literally nothing to do in stores, Connecticut. So when people go to UConn basketball games, yes, they're very popular, men and women. But they're largely very popular in their area because they win and because there's nothing else to do there. There's no professional sports in stores, Connecticut. I don't know what there is in terms of a nightlife in stores, Connecticut. With all respect. How far is Storrs, Connecticut from freaking Boston? I'm not even sure how far it is. But I can tell you this. It is a good... I'm looking at a map. It's not all that cool. I mean, it's not Boston. Boston's in Massachusetts. I'm sorry. I just turned stupid myself. It looks like it's a good hour from Hartford around there. 30 minutes to an hour. It, it, it's not near anything. Storrs is in the middle of flipping nowhere. It's about, it looks like it's about an hour or so from Providence. Like, it, it's near nothing. It's probably an hour and a half, looks like, on a map from Boston, I think, maybe around there. You got nothing to do there, but go to freaking Yukon games. Paige Bukers has been there for five years, going to be on her fifth year. Her highest viewed game was against Caitlin Clark. She's never drawn a million viewers for a, tele a game on TV. No one from UConn has followed all these previous stars from UConn to the WNBA. Nobody has. And they have produced more stars and more WNBA players probably than anyone in the league. I don't know for a fact. I'm guessing because of the success of the program and Gino R.E.M. as coach and the many different players like the Maya Moores, Rebecca Lobo, um, 
Diana Taurasi, all these different players that they've had that, that have been phenomenal b- basketball players in the WNBA. But, let's, but that's not going to change. Paige Bukers is not all of a sudden going to draw 1 million viewers for TV games. She doesn't have the skill set that Chris, Caitlin Clark has. Even if you think she's a better player, she doesn't have the actual skill set. She's not a better passer. She's not a better shooter. She doesn't have the range. So how, why would anyone watch her? They wa- She's good. She'll draw 500,000 viewers, 600,000 viewers. She's not going to draw 3 million viewers on a Sunday afternoon in a regular season game like Caitlin Clark was doing, 2 million viewers. She's not doing that. She's not filling up 55,000-seat stadiums. But let's keep on going. Years for 29 years, they've been taking the 160 ounce box of Frosted Flakes with no sugar on it and the government cheese from the NBA as this league lost money. Hand over fist, it lost money. And now all of a sudden, a 300% increase ain't good enough. Cheryl Miller, stop it. I got news for you. Caitlin Clark is the Harlem Globetrotters. When she goes and plays, they show up and the numbers are there. They still getting five and 6,000 at these other games where Caitlin Clark is nowhere to be seen. They still aren't watching those games. So before you get big and bad and tell us how great it is, even this year with Caitlin Clark, these aren't Robopedia numbers. These are from the Washington Post. The WNBA, the Welfare NBA, as I'll call it, is scheduled to lose $50 million this year. So, Cheryl, you want an eight? You want $8 billion? Pay back all the money the last 29 <laughs> years that the NBA put in. If this was a real business, E from this league would have been out of business 25 years ago, okay? If basic mathematics they're gonna lose 50 million dollars this year as a league 50 million i love rob parker because he puts it out there he said a whole lot more as the video went on uh ephraim salam you know pretty much co-signed it except for the fact that he got a little sensitive i'm not going to say the women's basketball WNBA is well sense for welfare because i have a wife and i have and I, and she's a woman and i have her home whatever dude whatever cute we we, we know we all know and you just co-signed it after that without that one particular statement. Big freaking deal. I am right now looking up, and I don't know for a fact, but I'm looking up to see the attendance at USC games, Southern Cal games with Juju, Juju Watkins. I don't know what – okay, here we go. Fourth – this is against Arizona, February 12, 2024, 6 p.m. game at home. 4,564 people. Now, I don't know what this building fills. Let's see what the Galen Center fills. I don't know what the attendance is. The, okay, the capacity of the Galen Center is 10,258. And Juju Watkins, who is an elite basketball player, can't fill up her own building. This is what I'm talking about. You, want, you may think that she's really great, and you may think that she's going to do what Caitlin Clark has done, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt as she was a freshman. But she was talked about on a level in which they were trying to compare her to Caitlin Clark and say she was better than Caitlin Clark. Newsflash, she wasn't. She wasn't close to being better. She shot 40% from the field. Caitlin Clark shot 47 46%. She didn't shoot anywhere near the three point three point percentage that Caitlin Clark shot. She didn't shoot 90% from the line. She didn't average nine assists a game. She didn't lead the country in scoring and assists. Like, she didn't. These are facts. She had a great freshman year, and she's a really good player. But this is a home game against Arizona. Let's take a, let's take a look for another one. I'm, let's see here. As the season went on, let's look. They lost to UConn the tournament, tournament, tournament. Stan, UCLA. UCLA. UCLA was really good. Okay, this was the turn. This was actually the big, this is the Pac-12 tournament. That's not a good one. 
see what they did when they played you. Okay, UCLA, they played January 14th of 2024. They filled it up for that game, okay? I didn't know. They filled it up. They won the game. It looks like a full house, 10,000, over 10,000 people there. They filled it up. So rivalry game, they filled up. Arizona State, 2-9, 3,100. The, 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 understand that this is what we're talking about. When we're talking about impact, it's not just the impact when you play your rival or when you play one of the best. It's your impact and what you draw when you play the shit can. I don't know what Arizona State's record was. I don't even care. I, I don't care. Arizona State's record, oh, like, let's see here. Do we have any? Like, they're not very good at this stuff. They were 10 and 12, 10 and 13 when they played this game. Again, not a good team. 3,128 people show up. Colorado. Colorado was good. 5,762. So a half empty building against Colorado, who went to the Sweet 16. Utah. 7,129. That was a 12 p.m. start. I'm going to guess it was a Saturday or, Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, Arizona again. This was the Pac-12 tournament. Washington State. This was in January 2671. That's a high school gym. State. That's, that's a good high school gym size fill up. Washington. 34-16. They filled up their building one time, and that was against a rival. Here's Oregon, 22-82. Oregon State, it's 27-49. Hell, I'm gonna, let's look at it the other way. Let's look at it the other way around. UCLA, let's say when they, when they, did they play at UCLA this year? They did not play at UCLA. Let's see how they played when they went to Oregon. Oregon had 7,145 people. The Matthew Knight Arena, how much does that? Matthew Knight Arena, Oregon. It seats 12,364. So as great as Juju Watkins was, and as important, as good as she was, my chair is giving me problems, folks. I'm sorry about this. It's just it's got me shrinking down. I don't even care no more. As good as Juju Watkins was, she's not drawing this, this type of crowd. Wherever Caitlin Clark went, Last year, as a senior, wherever she went as a junior, the road arena was full. People were paying to see Caitlin Clark play over their own team. They didn't care about their own team. They cared about watching her play. And that's what we talk about when we talk about changing the game, the impact. And Cheryl Miller says, oh, they know. We're going to have another gold medal. Who cares about the fucking gold medal? Nobody cares about the gold medal. You know what people cared about? They cared about watching Caitlin Clark play in the Olympics. That stupid committee stole, stole the opportunity for the world, the world, not the United States of America, because WNBA games are not being played all over the world. And if they are, no one's watching. Let's not sit here. It's not, let's not treat it like it's the NBA. It's not the NBA. It's the WNBA. It's still not, it's still not mainstream like that. It, it, it just isn't. Not worldwide. You took away the opportunity for the world to see Caitlin Clark in action in the Olympics. The grandest stage internationally. And what did you do? We said, fuck it. No, let's go send Diana Taurasi, who's been there five times already. Let's go send Chelsea Gray, who, uh, who's averaging seven points and four and a half assists a game this year and was injured for the last 10 months and has been absolutely terrible and is still really injured and really shouldn't be on this team. Let's go send over, ah, uh, shit, Kelsey Plum, who's five foot eight, yet. Caitlin Clark ain't physical enough, but five foot eight Kelsey Plum is physical enough. And Kelsey Plum still shoots at a 38% clip, 39% clip, whatever it is. And she's the second or third best player on her team. Let's go send Jackie Young. Let's go send Jewel Lloyd. Jewel Lloyd, who shoots 35% from the field. And does nothing but score. Does not a, she's not a point guard. Doesn't average nine assists a game. Doesn't average six assists a game. I don't know if she does. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I don't even care. You blew an opportunity, and you got Cheryl Miller on here asking for a 1,200% increase on what the NBA decides to give, according to Rob Parker, the welfare league. Because that's what it's been for 25 years. It's been a welfare league. It's subsidized by the NBA fully. 
They're still going to lose $50 million because they wanted private jets. They wanted chartered planes. Well, you're getting them, and that costs money. It ain't free. This isn't food stamps of America or you're getting WIC for your babies. This is real shit. This is money. It costs money to give you these things. So they're still going to lose hand over fist. So the NBA allocated this money for you. The NBA decided what it was worth, what you were worth to them. But your response, Cheryl, is to say, oh, that's a low ball offer. No, it's not. It's actually a great offer. And it's an offer that was created because of Caitlin Clark. And if you think that we know or people know that this is going to continue to grow this league, it's you can't sit here. You cannot sit here and say that. Because Paige Buchers isn't drawing 1.5 million viewers to watch her play on Sunday afternoon in the middle of January on TV. She's not. She's a great player. But there have been plenty of greats before her from UConn, plenty of greats from South Carolina before her, plenty of greats from so many different schools who haven't had, who maybe have the impact on their home floor to fill up a building, but they don't have the, 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 the viewership impact because their game doesn't excite people. Their game doesn't make you say, wow, holy shit. Caitlin Clark's game says it, makes you say it in every capacity. It does, and you don't like it, but it does. And Cheryl Miller like, loves Caitlin Clark. I know this, so I'm not, look, I like Cheryl Miller. I think Cheryl Miller's great. I think she's delusional, though. I think she has no business sense whatsoever because she doesn't know basic math. And she says, I don't know math. Well, Cheryl, go in for a job offer, and, and if you're making 20 bucks an hour for a year or two, and then you sit here and say, oh, I want a 12 hundred percent increase in my salary so i want to make 220 an hour 220 dollars an hour i was making 20 i want 220 get out of here is that 12 or is it at 11 i don't even know 220 240 an hour whatever it is i love rob parker's response spot on my guy i love your response it, they need to hear this shit because they keep living in a land of freaking in, in a dreamland this isn't disney world this isn't Disneyland. This is not some amusement park where you dream about shit. This is real life. This is real money. You got what you got. You make the deals on your own. See how much you get. See how much you get. God forbid something ever happens to Caitlin Clark. God forbid. She's injured for something. I would never wish that. But God forbid that happened. Where do you think the viewership of this league would go? It'd go into the toilet. Nobody would watch it again. Because there's no players like her. And if you think there are, show them to me. Because I've watched Paige play. I've watched Juju play. They're not like her. Or according to Kendrick Lamar, they're not like us. Us being Caitlin Clark. Not me. Us. She's an us. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts on it. Is Cheryl Miller crazy? Do you agree with Rob Parker? Do you agree with me? Because, I mean, I agree with everything he freaking said. Everything he said. Spot on. It's time people start accepting this and stop living in this fucking dreamland where people are just supposed to give you handouts. This isn't a handout world. It's not a handout world. Earn your shit. If Caitlin Clark has really put that... If Caitlin Clark was not in the league right now, that would not have been $200 million a year. That would not have been $2.2 billion. That would have been probably $100 million a year. Maybe eighty. It wouldn't have been $2.2 billion. It may have been... A billion dollars over 11 years. It wouldn't have been what it is. Promise to God that. That's all I got again. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and ring that bell. Come on now, baby.